What if it only took a month? What if in 30 days, world record, we got a new vaccine out in a month? Well, by day 30, if these numbers hold and we don't break the exponential progression of all of this, we would expect worldwide around 115 million cases and 23 million of those going into serious complications requiring hospitalization. Good afternoon, everyone. Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity here. It is uh, about 1220 in the afternoon on the 29th of January. This is your coronavirus update. And we're going to begin with the WHO officials say coronavirus spread outside of China is of grave concern. Well, of course it is. Thank you, uh, WHO officials, for finally getting there. I think it's a day late and a dollar short, but uh, we'll take it. Let's start there. Now, first thing I want to talk about today is I'm seeing a lot of people I think combating the fear, but I'm not sure what else is going on by saying stuff like this. This is just from this morning off of Twitter. Somebody here saying, Matt, a radar technician saying, FYI, panic is being spread, but we already have a virus of our own. And it has been like that for years. So if you fear the coronavirus, you should fear the flu first. Goes on to post that uh, 54 infants have been killed so far. Of course, that, that is quite the concern. But this kind of information is not helpful because we can't compare the flu to this coronavirus. Why not? Well, let's just do the numbers. This novel coronavirus, NCOV, is much worse than the flu first. Case fatality rate. The flu is about 1%. Uh, The NCOV is coming in at about 3% or higher. And uh, that's just a huge difference. And we're going to see about why that's uh, such a big difference and why that's so important in just a second. The R0. Flu is about 1.28. NCOV down here, 2.5 to 3.5 could be higher. We still don't know, but it really, really spreads very easily. And this is the big piece here, of course, the serious complication rate, which requires an ICU bed or equivalent. Flu, it's under 1%, maybe 200,000 hospital bed uh, uh, used last year for uh, flu patients in the United States. And that was with somewhere between 10 and 50 million people each year are infected uh, by the flu. For NCOV, It's around 20%, at least according to the official data we are getting out of China right now. And of course, we can't trust that too much. But here's why NCOV is way worse than the flu. Huge case fatality rate, the R0, much, much, much higher, and a very high serious complication rate, again, principally for people over the age of 50. Now, let's look here real quick before somebody says, oh, swine flu was bad. Well, here we're comparing on these charts, we've got the NCOV data in yellow, and we've got swine flu in red, which was a pretty big, that was a pretty big thing, um, and and it was bad. But here we can already see uh, when these get baselined to the days when the tracking really started, that NCOV has already exceeded. I certainly expect this number to be up about here today, the actual case rate. But look at the deaths compared. Swine flu was bad and people feared it, and I think rightfully so to some extent. But look at the death rate in red for swine flu NCOV has already exceeded that, and we're expecting that number to shoot a lot higher today. So this is worse even than swine flu. It's not even comparable to ordinary seasonal flu. It's worse than the swine flu. All right, I want to continue on with what I consider to be an almost criminally bad misinformation campaign, and maybe this just speaks to the absolute deplorable state of science education in the U.S. these days. But here's CNN. Here's CNN out uh, just yesterday. This came out on the 28th. So here they're talking about how this outbreak compares with SARS. Well, look, everybody, aren't you comforted? We've got this many cases and this many deaths, and SARS was worse. There you go. There's your comparison. And also death rate, 2.2%. And again, they're making a huge mistake here by simply dividing that number by that number. You can't do that. Why? Because there's about a seven-day lag between the time you are identified and the time you die. So you actually need to compare this number to how big this number was seven days ago. And that's a very different death rate. And we won't know that number until all is said and done. With SARS, we have the final numbers. We have how many confirmed cases there were. We know how many deaths there were, whether they're right or wrong. Those are the official numbers. And that gives you that death rate. But here, very misleadingly, CNN is trying to say, look, there's fewer cases and a lower death rate. That's the comparison they're making. And even uh, Statista, who I expect a lot more from because these people, their whole job and reason for being is statistics. Here they're using a bar chart uh, comparing uh, coronaviruses with SARS. They are saying that it exceeds the SARS outbreak. But how do you how do you make sense of these? How do you how do you compare these two numbers? Uh, What do you it's very difficult. 
uh, I don't even know what to make of this because this is a time series data. So let's look at this on a time series basis. Ah, here what we've done, again, I think I've shown this one before, but let's cover it because it's important. These have been baseline from days from the first infection that's recorded, and we're putting them on the similar timeline. So here we are, you know, approaching 50 days after uh, NCOV is first detected, and here's how many people have been infected. SARS really cooked along for a long time. Not much happened before it started to take off, but it never achieved this perfect exponential sort of a, a spread rate. It was a little bit lower and slower than that because it didn't spread quite the same. And of course, as we went over coronaviruses right now, yes, they are exponential because we put those that data we saw in yellow is now on a log chart here, flat lines for death, flat line here for uh, as well for cases. So that means it's still in the logarithmic phase and that's getting really important because so we see here from Bianca Research, they put in actual blue data, as blue as in reported infections. And by the way, we all think the reports are low, either because the testing wasn't in place or China is politically suppressing that information. Get to that in just a second. But for whatever reason, even if we just use the reported infections, this is on a log chart and over time. And here you can see that if this is right, in the next few days, we're going to be up near 20,000 case reported cases and deaths to follow along. Now, why is this uh, really important? Why do I want to cover this? Because we are still in the log phase of this. Listen, that could change. Maybe these uh, all the pandemic preparations in China do actually dial back the uh, rate of spread. But right now, the data we have says it's still in the logarithmic phase. So I want to draw your attention back here to dot three, bullet point three, where I said serious complication rate, which requires an ICU bed of around 20%. The Bianco research, that's great. It goes out a couple of days. What happens if we go even further? By the way, this is about a 40% daily increase. So if we set the rate of cases to 40% and we ask the question with serious complications at 20%, what would we expect? So I built this uh, spreadsheet a couple days ago. Uh, here at day zero, that would have been on uh, the 28th. We would have expected 4774 cases. Uh, and about a thousand serious complications. That's exactly what we saw yesterday. In yellow are the numbers I'm expecting to be reported by the end of today at the 29th. But then we just carry this forward growing by 40% and serious complications tracking that at 20%. You've heard probably, hey, there could be a flu vaccine. I mean, I'm sorry, an NCOV vaccine coming out. That would be great. What if it only took a month? What if in 30 days, world record, we got a new vaccine out in a month? Well, by day 30, if these numbers hold and we don't break the exponential progression of all of this, we would expect worldwide around 115 million cases and 23 million of those going into serious complications requiring hospitalization. Just to put that number in perspective, in the United States, there are about just under 100,000 ICU beds. Most of them are actually already full. So there aren't 100,000 just sitting around waiting to be used. Uh, but this is a worldwide number. Uh, most of those actually would be in China. And uh, then finally, just to uh, finish this out, my biggest concern or a huge concern for me right now is that I'm just operating like you with very poor information. Forget CNN and Statista trying to mislead us with bar charts and, and crazy uh, air, square area diagrams. I haven't found any unofficial news from private citizens out of China for about 48 hours now. Remember two, three days ago, there were all those videos of people in hospital beds uh, and, and in the hospital waiting areas and even lying in the hallways. I've only seen state-sponsored or approved news. And just to show you um, what I mean by that, let's look here uh, on Twitter. I go to coronavirus, scrolling through the top feeds. You know, this video is from several days ago. Uh, we've got, of course, this is state sanctioned, the whole idea of the people of Wuhan uh, excitedly, you know, cheering for themselves. So that made it out. Um, but really nothing else. You know, we're not seeing in here a lot of uh, private videos from inside China. This is, of course, state sanctioned. They want everybody to see how great they're doing building that big new hospital. Lots of videos about that, hundreds. But otherwise, you know, um, we're just seeing uh, things from outside of China. This is from Cape Town. Uh, as well, when we go over to Reddit, this used to be my favorite Reddit thread. Uh, it's since been moderated into uselessness. Uh, for me, I've had to find other avenues for information, but this is our China flu. This kind of thing, when I sort by new or even hot, either way, 
what we used to see was a lot of videos of and pictures from inside those hospital facilities, and we're just not seeing those anymore. Um, so those have all been clamped down, and uh, yeah, there's information here, but we're not seeing a lot from inside China. So yes, that concerns me, and that is my biggest concern right now is I can't get good data that I trust and uh, even the anecdotes that give me a sense of where we are. It, it could be worse. It could be better. The lack of information is troubling. So thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs>